This is my game hunting and game selling adventure at Retro Palooza Convention. What is up, Internet? Retro here, and this past week would have been Retro Palooza 2020, but unfortunately, it did not happen because of friggin' Rona. But that is okay because I still have all of my footage from last year's convention because I am a terrible YouTuber and I just never made the video. But what better time than now to make this video and to show you all of my game finds, some footage from the convention, and share some of my experiences from the convention. So if you don't know what Retropalooza is, it is a huge gaming toy nostalgic convention held in the Dallas Arlington area put on by none other than The Game Chasers, one of the first game hunting channels on YouTube. And I have been multiple times, but just as a participant. But this past year was particularly uh, special because I went as a game vendor. I actually had a booth and I sold tons of stuff um, that I just had doubles of or, or just stuff that I didn't want uh, for my collection anymore. Also, I went for the first time as a YouTuber. So back then in October, I think I might have had 1,500, 1,600 subscribers, uh, fairly small and pretty new. I might have had the channel for like five or six months. Um, but the thing I was most excited about was to meet some other YouTubers that I had built um, a friendship with, connection with, just through like Instagram or YouTube. Uh, and I was super excited to hang out with them, game hunt, get dinner, go to the arcade. So uh, I got to do that as well. But guys, I'm about to show you a ton of different footage from basically from the beginning to the end of the convention, but it's filled with, again, game hunting, all my finds. Guys, I got so much stuff. Uh, and I just never unbox it. It's been in a tub in the garage and I'm like, I need to make that video. I'm not gonna do anything with that stuff until I make that video and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta make this video. So I'm about to show you a ton of stuff that I actually got as well. Some footage from the arcade, the panel, just a ton of different stuff. So hang with me throughout the whole video. Uh, I'm gonna take you from the very, very beginning. So I had to go pick up my buddy, Tommy. Uh, so Tommy is actually uh, one of the guys that helped me start this whole channel. He kind of taught me how to edit from the very beginning because I've never edited a video ever in my life. So he kind of showed me the ropes on how to edit a video. So I go to pick up Tommy. He is literally the funniest person I've ever known in my entire life. What's up? Uh, I hope you pack like literally nothing because there's uh, not a lot of room back here. What is That's it? That's the haunted house of ghost mysteries, dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've never talked about that. There's all kinds of like, Haunted electronics and stuff in there. Yeah. Like there's this haunted Nintendo 64 atomic purple clear controller in there. So I don't know if you can see. Not a lot of room. You only have a backpack though. You're oh, wow, okay. don't hit my car, dog. Oh, God. <laughs> I think there's actually There's a spot if you need it. Well I got it. Oh, there's not a spot. Right here. I I give you a spot right here. Down there. Hold up. And then on top. Ooh. Got a Commodore 128 and a 1571 disk drive. Boxed. Yeah, from Sears, dude. We got those manuals, like what? Manuel. Look at this foam from 300 years ago. What is that? This is the disk drive. Is that user manual? Did you steal this from me? Can I steal this? Are you, trying to, are you trying to sell this? Yeah, dude, I want to sell it. Okay. So I pick up Tommy, we head to get some breakfast, and then we head out on the road for our five and a half, six hour journey to get to Retropalooza on Friday night, or actually at four o'clock, because that is when it opened up to start getting the booth ready. So we finally got there and we started setting up our table in all of our games to get ready for the morning. Here is our booth, getting everything put up. A ton of movies. VHS, ton of Rugrats, selling these two each, three for five. The Simpsons, Flintstones, we got board games over there, puzzles, Mario plushes, a bunch of dollar, two dollar figures. And then everybody, everybody got in at four, so we've been here for two hours, getting everything set up for tomorrow and the next day. Pretty pumped. 
be here. So after that, guys, we were pretty beat. and We went straight back to the hotel to get some rest to get ready for Saturday morning for the convention to start. So as soon as the convention started on Saturday, guys, we were slammed. We always had three, four, five people in our booth all the time, like all the time. And we were selling stuff like crazy. Here's our booth. Got a bunch of stuff down there for sale. And then we've been open for two hours. I sold about 200 bucks worth, no, three, three to $400 worth of stuff. So you might've heard in that last clip, I think we made three, $400 in just the first couple hours. And we just continued to sell stuff, which was, which was awesome because I needed to get rid of stuff. So after a couple hours of the convention starting, I finally got to meet one of my favorite YouTubers. It's Ed from Ed Retro Geek Out. Uh, so yeah, like, quit retro right this and just do Instagram. You also do YouTube. I mean, quit for a while. Are you doing it again no. now or not? Come on. I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back soon. You're gonna be back soon? Okay. Are you gonna make a video out of this today? I may. Yeah. You are. Are you, I'm sure you, you are. Make you, 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 make, you make a lot more videos than I do. Uh, I schedule them. Content planning. So if like you're not you, familiar with Edge like channel, it is amazing, guys. It is all things gaming and uh, retro retro toys. So exactly the same stuff I like. We click, man, we, we get each other, and it was awesome to finally get to meet him. He is based out of Belgium and has an amazing YouTube channel. Um, but as we're talking and hanging out for a little bit, he's like, hey, I have a couple things I wanna give you. And I'm like, really, are you, are you serious? And so he gifted me uh, my, my first two things I'll show you uh, that I picked up at the convention. So the first thing he gave me was an Ed's Retro Geek Out shirt. This thing is sick. I cannot wait to start wearing this in videos. I have not wore it because again, guys, this stuff has been in my garage in a tub. I just have not made the video, but I'm ready to rock this shirt now, Ed. Thank you so much for the shirt, but this isn't the only thing he gave me. Then he was like, man, I know how much of a Home Alone fan you are. So I, I wanted to pick you up or give you Home Alone for the PS2. Now, what's interesting about this is this was never released uh, in the US. This is a PAL exclusive. And I was like, I didn't even know, I didn't even know this was a thing. And he was like, yeah, man, I saw it at, I think he saw like a thrift shop or something and was like, Rick has to have this. So Ed, thank you. Thank you so much for this. So after selling for a couple more hours, I had Tommy take over at the booth and I started to go game hunt. So a couple of things that I wanted at the convention, I wanted a power glove and I wanted a full size Pee Wee Herman doll. Why? I, I just love Pee Wee Herman. And I think I, I love the show as a kid and I was like, that's what I want. I never see them. And I thought maybe I would see one at the convention. So I go game hunting for a while and I find a ton of stuff and I actually do like a full recap video there uh, in our booth, but the audio was trash and I just don't like it. So I'm just gonna show you what I picked up now. So one of the first things I got was this Game Boy Player's Guide. This was actually given to me by a subscriber. Uh, thank you Shredder for this. I think he actually gave me a, a Game Boy bag as well at some point, but this is awesome. I can't wait to put this up on the shelf and read through this. So the next thing I got was two things from Scott Squatch. He is another YouTuber, one of the original game hunting channels as well. And he had a booth and he had this handy gear. It is a Sega Game Gear uh, attachment magnifying glass with light potentially, but it's in the box. And I was like, dude, I gotta get that. So I got this from him and I got uh, this PS1 wireless controller. Uh, I have never seen this before. And I was like, man, I gotta get that especially since it was in the box. I think he gave me both of these for like 30 bucks. I think he had like 50 on them and he cut me a deal. So thank you, Scott Squatch for these. So the next thing I got was the Retro Duo Portable. So this plays NES and Super Nintendo games. And this was a trade. A guy came up to me and said, hey, I'm interested. And I think it was a Sega Saturn game that I had like maybe 40 bucks listed on it. And he was like, would you be interested in trading for this? I took it out, I tested it and it worked great. And I was like, yeah, why not? I don't have one of these in the collection. Again, it's in the box. I like the box. And I was like, let's do it. So we traded and I got this Retro Duo Portable. So the next thing I picked up was some Sega Genesis games. I went to a booth and he had a ton of Genesis box games and I picked up two that I really wanted. I did not have for the collection. Two Nickelodeon uh, show games, Ren and Stimpy, which one is this? Stimpy's Invention. And then I got Ah, real monsters don't have or did not have either of these in the collection. 
He had 18 on them. He gave them to me for 14. So great pickup there. So this next booth is where I really scored at. So there were these guys that basically um, they buy out like small game stores uh, and even larger game stores. And they just have a huge booth, like three or four booths combined. And they sell at ridiculously low prices. And I have uh, gained relationship with these guys. So they usually cut me deals uh, on some stuff. So the first thing I got from them was this game.com. Game Thanks to be touched. Wires you to the internet. So if you're not familiar with this, it is a portable uh, game system from Tiger Handheld that you actually put cartridges in. It's kind of their answer to the Game Boy. And it is not good, but it is a novelty. And I have always wanted one of these. And this was in the freaking box. And I was like, dude. I've got to get this thing. I asked, they didn't even have it priced. Actually, most of their stuff was not priced because they get so much of it that they just put it up and they're like, I don't know, throw me an offer. And that's what I did. I was like, hey, oh, I think I looked it up and it's like 50 bucks, 50 or 60 bucks in the box. And I asked what they wanted. They said 30 and I said, 20 bucks? He said, sure, give me 20 bucks. So I got the game.com for 20 bucks. Then the next thing I got from them was this Game Genie for the original Nintendo in the box. Now the box isn't amazing, but it's still it's still pretty decent. It is collection worthy for me. I'm gonna throw this up on the shelf, um, but they, they sold this to me for 20 bucks as well. So this and the game.com for 40 bucks. And then the last box thing I got from that booth was this Mario Kart Super Circuit. Uh, and I paid 25 bucks for this. Uh, I don't know if that was like an amazing deal, but I did not have it boxed and I wanted to get that. So 25 bucks on that. All right, guys, now this is where it gets nutty. Now they had a huge racks of games, NES, Super Nintendo, N64 games, and it was buy five for $20. Uh, five for 20, and there were uh, a ton of really great games. Like, they did not really look up the prices on these. There were games in there that were $15, $20 games at, what is that, four bucks a piece? So I, I went crazy at this booth and picked up a ton of stuff. So I'm gonna go through these pretty quick. The first one is Friday the 13th. Next we have Gyromite. Next we got Double Dare. I didn't even know there was a Double Dare NES game until I saw this and was like, gotta have it. Next we have Dick Tracy. Uh, a lot of these have their little sleeves too. Guys, four bucks each on these nuts. Now we have Exodus Ultima. It's kind of hard to see, but whoa, there it is. Uh, another one that I don't see very often here is Mystery Quest. I don't have almost any of these for the collection, so I had to get them. I do have this one, but a great game. Here is Batman. Next up is RoboCop. Here is just an OG Super Mario Bros. Not Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, just Mario Bros. Another one I don't see very often, Dr. Chaos. Four dollars, man! And then Gremlins 2. We are not done, guys. <laughs> Here is Super Nintendo Rocky wrote it. I think just a platformer, but I was like, dude, I don't think I see this hardly ever. $4. Crazy. Here is International Superstar Soccer 64. At the time I needed this, this was before I completed my, N my N64 set. Here is Beavis and Butthead for the Super Nintendo. Here is Mario's Time Machine. Not a very great game, but did not have it yet. So I had to pick that up. Wario Woods surprisingly did not have this one either. Gonna have to find space for all this stuff. All right, here is Star Trek, uh, the 25th anniversary. Whoa, Star Trek was that old back then? Goodness gracious. All right, here is Castle of Dragon. Don't, don't see that one. And then we got Excite Bike, one of my favorite games on the NES. And here is Ghostbusters 2. Is there a Ghostbusters 1 on the NES? I think there is. And Crystallis, great game, really good game. Just a few more things to show you before we get into some of the arcade footage and the panel footage from the convention. Uh, this is another, another weird, obscure thing that I found, Game Essentials uh, Control for the Sega Saturn, Controller for the Sega Saturn. The only reason why I wanted to get this was because there was Blockbuster branding on it. Why? 
I don't know. I don't know if this was sold at Blockbuster or what it was, but I was like, dude, that is amazing. And I think he sold this to me for like a couple bucks. So I had to pick that up. So I told you earlier, I wanted a power glove and a full size PB Herman doll. Uh, there were a couple power gloves at the convention, but they were way overpriced, like more than eBay. So I passed on three or four different ones, but I did get a full size talking PB doll. Now you probably have seen this in my videos over here in the corner next to my Ernest doll because uh, I did not have this in the tub because it was going to get crushed. But dude, this thing is amazing. And uh, I think he had this listed or uh, not listed. He had this priced at uh, 80 or 90 bucks. I had him come over to my booth to see if there's anything that he wanted to trade for. And he, he wanted a couple Sega Saturn games and maybe a Genesis game that was about the same price as this. It might've been like, it was like 50 or 60. And he said, if you give me those couple games in 20 bucks, Pee Wee is yours. I was like, done. I got me a full size Pee Wee Herman doll in the box. <laughs> Man dog! <laughs> in my last pickup, I actually got at the end of the convention. Like the convention was over, we were shutting down and everybody was packing up. But I had my eye on this GameCube box because first off, I don't have a GameCube box and I wanted it for the collection. But then also it had this sticker on it so it's some kind of variant it's a zelda collector's edition variant and i wanted it i asked the guy what he wanted and i think at the beginning of the convention for just the box he wanted like 30 bucks and um, that's a pretty decent price and then at some point he dropped it down to 20 which was really good and i don't know why nobody bought it i actually forgot about it went back over uh again when we were all shutting down and i was like hey you still have that box and he's like yeah you want it for 15? It's like, throw it to me. <laughs> so he throwed me, he threw, he threw me, he threw me this uh, GameCube variant Zelda box and I was stoked to get it, to add it to the collection someplace where I have no idea. So let's backtrack just a little bit. After day one, uh, there was an after party at, at an arcade, an amazing arcade. Can't remember the name of it at this point, but, but it was a ton of fun and I got to hang out with Ed from Ed Retro Geek Out, Greco from Greco Fabulous and Narc, not another retro channel. Just three guys I've been talking to for a little bit uh, and it was cool to hang out with them and just, and just chill at the arcade. We hung out at the arcade for a couple hours, but had to get back to get ready for Sunday, the last day, and to try to unload the rest of the stuff that we had at our booth. So on Sunday, we sold a ton more stuff, but guys, I had to get to a panel. One of my favorite parts of the convention is going to panels. The year before, I saw beat em ups, Pat the NES Punk, a gaming historian, just a bunch of guys that I've looked up to for so long, but I had to get to at least one panel, and I went to my boys, Ed, Narc, and Greco's um, panel. I think it was called Toy hunting around the world or something like that. And it was a ton of fun just hearing some of their stories and some of their tips and tricks on, on toy hunting. So they're mainly toy hunters. They do some game stuff, but, but mainly toy stuff. It was awesome to hang out with them and see their panel. So after that panel, guys, it was really time to shut down, get everything packed up and to get back on the road. I was pleasantly surprised by all of the stuff that we sold, but I also bought a lot of games uh, also, but that's okay, because I needed these games, right? But guys, it was an amazing, amazing trip to the Arlington, Dallas area for Retropalooza. I am still bummed that it is not gonna happen this year, but that is okay. Next year, it is happening. It has to happen because I have way too much stuff to sell next year. Guys, thank you uh, for watching the video. If you would like this video, it helps the algorithm. It really does. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace.